Hola, welcome to my channel Clear Vision. My name is Simon, I'm a psychotherapist and all the videos here are based on my experiences of my psychotherapy practice as well as my own journey through life as an individual. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel, it does help and leave any feedback in the comments section below the videos. I'm always up for a debate and, I'm all, and I try very hard to um, respond to everybody's comments. This week's video comes, it's, it's not going to cover everything I want to cover in this subject, but it kind of covers the uh, something I get asked a lot in the room, which is how do I get from here to a better place? And it's a very, very vague request, ultimately. And so my answer is always the same. And it doesn't matter whether it comes from suffering uh, from someone who has experienced, say, let's say, domestic violence, domestic abuse, um, addiction issues, uh, existential issues, career issues, marital issues, relationship issues, family issues, anger issues, lack of emotion issues, being cold issues, being numb. It doesn't matter. What most people are aware of is that where they are right in the here and now is not a place that they want to be. And then most people when they come to me and say this kind of thing during their therapy, it's coming from a place of also, I've been doing this for a long time. So the first thing is, and it's, I think it was um, Einstein's paradox, you know, to that it, it's kind of foolhardy uh, to uh, keep continuing the same patterns and expecting different results. And at some point, most people become quite aware of this. You know, I keep doing the same thing. This keeps happening in my life. I don't want to be in this position anymore. My whole world's come crashing down, but I, and I want to make it better. And more often than not, one of the most empowering things that we begin to work on within the therapy room is to actually define and shape what that better is. Because without that kind of vision, excuse the pun, but without that kind of idea, that framework, this is how I want my life to be, this is how I want to be, you, you don't move. You can't move. You're actually going to you know, wander around could probably continue in the same patterns, changing a few things, they don't work, so you go back and you get more and more defensive and maybe more nihilistic, or you continue, like I said, with those old behaviors and you slip back into addiction and things like that. And at some point when you are, I love this phrase, sick and tired of being sick and tired, then there's this, I want to be better. And forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but the way to do this, to begin to do this, is to begin to look at, first of all, your external and how you wish that to be. So your external world, your environment, how you wish that to be. And then the next thing to consider is, can I, can I change this? And chances are you can't change people. And sometimes, especially when I'm working with teenagers or children, it's very, very difficult. Um, the same with kind of domestic violence and stuff. It's very, very difficult to leave the environment. There are many, many implications that go into it or in the case of adolescents and, and children, uh, they don't have enough power, they don't have the ability, they don't have the financial resources to be able to remove themselves from a, a situation. Or on a greater scale, the support network, which everybody needs to remove yourself from a situation. Or even enough self-esteem to remove yourself from a situation. So that's one place to begin to work. Once you have looked at that, and decided what you can control in it and what you can't, what you can change and what you can't, then you can also, more powerfully, begin to work on the self. And beginning to work on the self is a, in this respect is about how do I want to be? I know, you know, yeah, I want a, a happy relationship. I want to be with people I can have a, a good conversation with that stimulates me. I want to be in a loving relationship. I want to you know, create a home for myself and, and my loved ones. All of these things externally, I want to be financially secure. All of that stuff is fantastic. Um, you know, in a less dysfunctional relationship, all of these things, less stress, less whatever, whatever. And now you have to work on yourself and you have to decide what you want you to be like. And a lot of people is, it's uh, like, you know, for instance, they trigger me. They, they do this to me, they do that to me. And it's like, okay, again, bring it back to how you can change yourself in terms of those situations. Do you want to spend the rest of your life being triggered 
by X, Y, and Z dynamics, uh, because chances are you're gonna come across these quite a lot. Do you want to spend your life reacting to situations in, a, in an angry way, in a self-destructive way? Do you want to continue on your path of addiction, which is going to take away your loved ones, your life, your financial resources, people's respect for you, and just eat away at your life and destroy you? These are all things, um, you know, I get, one I get a lot is I don't want to keep being sad. I don't want to keep being depressed. You know, and again, so it's then, okay, if I saw you in a year's time, if I saw you in three years and I was watching through a window at your life, how would I see you? How would you want me to see you? How would you want to see yourself? How would you want someone? How would you be interacting? What is that? And describe it in great detail. And again, it can kind of come under journaling or you can work with someone on it or a friend. But it's actually about delving down into that and not only shaping if you shape yourself, you'll shape the world around you. There's a lot of there's a lot of woohooness around that, but it's, it's actually very, very true, and it's a very powerful thing to do. So begin to form an idea of the shape you want to have in a world, the way you want to be in the world, and be detailed. I want to be able to have a disagreement with someone without feeling rejected, without fear of rejection, without becoming so angry or so upset or so quiet in that situation that I can't function within that situation. I want to be able to progress forward in my career and, and shine and, and learn more and prove my attributes. Well, what have you got to do for that? Well, maybe I've got to put myself forward. Maybe I've got to develop more self-belief so my future self would be more confident, more more confident in social situations, more confident in this situation, more loving in my relationship, more aware of what the other person's thinking. Shape all of this stuff in, in quite some detail. And then you take the necessary steps. You begin to work towards being that. And, and a big part of that actually achieving this is, is this initial part, forming it. Because without that kind of vision ahead of you of what you want to be, how you want to be, and what you want for yourself from the external, which is almost secondary in this process. Without that, you are wanderingly, wandering aimless, aimlessly. There is no aim. There's this vague notion of an aim, but without, once you have this specific, and be adaptable, be flexible with it. Don't be rigid with it because that'll bring you more pain when it because inevitably there will be challenges along the way there will be problems on your route there will be struggles on your path so be adaptable and you might even change your mind you might change you might the changing your mind on the external might change your mind on the internal so always be open but without that initial framework that adaptable flexible framework which you can change which you need to build first you can't move forward once you have that, you begin moving forward, you begin adapting. And also when you do that, you can see potential pitfalls along the way, potential problems, potential resistance that you might have, potential situations where it might look like you've not quite achieved what you want to achieve. And then you can kind of prepare yourself for them and decide what you're going to do in those situations. So I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some understanding of, it's a very, it's not, it's kind of like a bit of a cover all for a lot of issues, but for sure, without that, the ability to, to change one's life becomes a slower, more arduous, more, le a less focused, with less clarity process. Equally, it's ultimately important to acknowledge achievements. So if you've set out to be this way, if you've set out to, let's say for instance, enter into uh, disagreeing with someone, disagreeing with someone, you have a difference of opinion, you don't normally do it because it brings conflict and it brings potential rejection. When you begin to change things in yourself, your way of thinking, your way of feeling, your way of operating, because you don't want to be like that anymore and you've highlighted that, you've defined that, you've explored that, and you actually achieve it, then you can acknowledge it. Because without that framework, you can't acknowledge your achievements. And acknowledging those achievements are really, really empowering and help keep you moving forward. It's a bit like when you try and save money or you try and get fit or whatever it is. It's the same kind of thing. All of those 
little, you know, you have an idea in your mind of what you want to be like. And all of those little milestones along the way, those little achievements along the way are motivators, become motivators in your times of doubt, in your times of hardship, in your times of tiredness. So like I said, I hope that helps. And please leave any comment and comments or feedback in the comment section below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Adios.